Hey guys, this week, I learned how to create street art from one of Medellin, Colombia's most prominent artists. As a kid, whenever my environment was too stressful to handle, I used to draw in my room. I would just play some music, and it would take me away as I focused on drawing scenes from my favorite anime. Seeing the street art in Medellin, Colombia made me wonder if a lot of the art was also a way for others to escape their environment. While getting a haircut from one of her local friends, David, he mentioned that he knew one of the best street artists here in Medellin. That's when I decided, I'm going to meet this artist and learn how to beautifully vandalize commercial property. But first, I had to prove to him that I was serious. Just like any other time I decided to learn something, I went to YouTube and I typed in how to do graffiti and I immediately got started. All right, so starting with the basics, I started by practicing tagging my name in block graffiti letters. My favorite tip was closely examining what you don't like, so I kept my eye on things like spacing, thickness, and distance, so that way I could figure out what I didn't like and I could improve it the second time around. I love how immediately actionable all these steps are. So if you take a look at this first attempt, right? I didn't like the distance of the capital letter I, so I decided to lowercase it to close the distance and my name has exactly six letters, right? So the space between the M and the K should be the center. So I worked on making these improvements a second time around and I got this. Next, I learned that there are levels to this shit. So I decided to practice the first five levels. Tagging is a basic signature. So you don't want to be leaving your name everywhere and self snitching. So you want to come up with the name to tag. I came up with TK. Level two, this is where you start to add your own style, where you add form by messing with the proportions. Rather than loopy or bubbly letters, I always identify with sharp and straight lines. So I decided to add corners to my tag. Level three, this is where things get interesting. You can add borders and a color palette to express your style. I went with embellishing the edges, thickening the font, and then adding strong contrasting colors. Thick. Throw ups or throwies. Once again, not really my style, but it's important to be able to throw up fast in certain areas. So I practiced a shortened bubble version of my tag, TK. If I'm being honest, everything up until level five was relatively easy. It was just about messing around and kind of deciding what my style was. So a piece or a masterpiece is a grand scaled piece of art. It incorporates your style, but most importantly, it should reflect a bit of who you are. I thought it'd be cool to throw in some of my art from my favorite anime growing up. Do you feel like anime? And I spent a majority of the time here designing what I want to see on a wall. Yo, this <laughs> Just came out with the concept. Dude, yeah, this, this is sick. Once the piece was planned, we decided to contact David to confirm the appointment with the art. Once we were locked in, we decided to go grab some paints. These paints were not nearby. After showing the artist the work that I did on my own, he agreed to meet with us. So right now we're going 30 minutes out of the city all the way up to Envigado to meet a street artist named Yas. We got invited to go check out his personal studio, so gonna go do some art. When it was raining all the morning, it left me dancing in the gloom. This artist was none other than Yas. This is Yas. Hola, mi nombre es Yas. And this eh, is his art. Eh, He's uh, he's thinking we're gonna like do a little practice first. Kind of get used to sort of like understanding like how to spray, how to prep it. Mm -hmm. And then he thinks the whole piece is probably gonna take around two hours. Immediately he wanted to challenge me a bit. He wanted to give me a lesson and wanted me to practice before he we went to the wall. We decided to use a different model to learn about depth and perspectives. So this is my favorite part of learning any new skill, getting to watch my progress in real time. I love being able to iteratively look at my attempts and see the improvements okay. step by step. And I did it again, and I did it again, and I did it again. <laughs> Once I got the final outline of the image, it was time to go to the wall. I've actually never spray painted anything before. I can try. So I had to learn from zero. I had to learn everything about the can itself, the the tips, I think it's they're called. Thicker. Caps, actually, no, they're caps. They're not tips, they're caps. I was like, should I start with something easier? He was like, that is easy. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yaz's lessons. Before you even spray, you have to shake the can well. 
Careful. The important thing is consistent pressure. Oh my, I know my two inches. Jesus Christ. Better stability and control instead of using your arms, which is wild. Better than use your body. It's gonna be tough. <laughs> One day paint, eh, eh, eh. It's just lose it. Transition. Shake. Like on paper, use a light paint to draw the outlines. Then go over it again. Always clear the paint from the caps. All right, so day one, after spending over seven hours at Yaz's, we decided to pack it up for the night so we could come back when it was light out we could actually see something. To be honest with you, I wasn't sure at this point if I was going to be able to complete the piece that I'd originally designed. I feel like you, can, you know what it is. It looks like an homage to it. Hey, we back, baby. We're here to finish what we started. Heat in my vein like vernacular. Cook up the beat with a spatula. Y'all are not ready for action. I'm smoking these rappers and feeling spectacular. Making a killer like massacre. Watch out, I'm whipping my wrist. Right on my city, been pissed, but I show them love. I'm not the one that's a risk. My homie told me that when. I've been trying to hold the can down here, like trying to push, control the pressure. Obviously, I can't get that leverage I'm looking for. I just moved my hand up to here. Huh. Now I can use my finger to control how much pressure is coming out. At this point, I was still worried that the piece was going to look like trash. The problem was, I had been staring at the work from up close where I could see all the mistakes and blemishes. So when I finally stepped back, this happened. Alright, how does this look? The, the, the final thing, Dean, I'm a good teacher. Man. He got perseverance. It's, yeah. it's essential to grow up. He can be a graffiti artist? Yeah. One month, he, he can make a, a good piece in the streets. But a boy, Yaz, this wasn't done pushing. Bubble. Another bubble. Estilo. Can we do like, like line like that? Yes. You're a stylist. Yeah, because Porque, this is, has like really sharp lines. Okay. Like yours is like round, you know? Mm -hmm. This one, I think maybe like, you know? Thanks for, for saying that. You think that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it fits the style a little bit. The confidence make artists. This experience with Yaz was yet another reminder. Working with a mentor can help you improve drastically faster than working on your own. All right, man. Last piece, the most important. I gotta let people know this is mine. You know that I did this. <laughs> right when we thought the day was over, someone pulled up. So Sifu is another well-renowned artist from Medellin. You know what? We'll let her work speak for itself. Another huge benefit to working with a mentor is that they're always surrounded by others who are way ahead of you. You'll level up just through association. Sifu was really friendly. As soon as she got out of the car, she started helping us out. Like a little line somewhere just to try it out. Is this black? I'm just saying, I feel like I got to just do a collab piece with Frank and Yaz and yeah. Sifu, so... Yeah. <laughs> and with that final addition, in that final moment, I took a second to reflect. I believe art is a lot like business. I honestly believe what makes me a great entrepreneur is that I'm not afraid to fail. Even when I have no f***ing clue what I'm doing, and everything I'm doing just looks terrible and isn't working, I just get up and I keep on going again and again while figuring out why it's not working. Then I seek advice and listen to those who are way ahead of me because if you keep going, you'll eventually create something special that was just an idea in your head. Subscribe to the channel so you can continue learning new skills with us. Just for copyright reasons, I'm not even gonna call it what it is. It's a um,